Hello, I'm Stan Stalnaker at the Low Carbon Innovators Forum, part of Climate Week NYC, now going into its fifth year. And of course, I'm from Hub Culture, and joining me is Chris Libri from HP. He's the Director of Sustainable Programs at HP and working on a lot of things, including HP's involvement with Climate Week, because you guys are one of the main supporters. That's absolutely right. Uh, we've been a supporter of Climate Week for a number of years, and uh, one of the reasons that we do that is it's a uh, great assembly of leaders, uh, companies, and thought leaders uh, in climate change and in uh, addressing climate innovation. Everybody's in the room, right? Everybody's in the room. It's a great opportunity to hear great new ideas and make great connections. And you guys are working on some cool stuff. You're holding this amazing new piece of technology from I am. HP. This is called uh, Project Moonshot, and this is a server, uh, believe it or not. So I'm holding a server in my hands. So a server used to be about this big. Exactly. Uh, you can fit 45 of the Moonshot servers into the space of a, a conventional uh, x86 server. Uh, so it's 80% uh, more space efficient, but what's even more important from the climate change and the carbon point of view is it's 89% more energy efficient. So this is an 89% reduction in energy use to it operate is. The, the, the server? It is, versus current standard server technology. So that must save companies a huge amount of money. It saves a huge amount of money. It's also cheaper, actually, to buy. It's a 77% less expensive solution. Uh, but the on costs, the operating costs, also obviously significantly lower. So, you know. Is it more powerful than an older server? Because um, they're getting faster and faster? It's comparable in, in speed and in capability to uh, a current x86 right. configuration. So, you guys have managed to shrink. size it down and shrink it? And Absolutely, which is totally essential because information needs are growing all the time. So, just in the last two years, we've produced more information, uh, mankind than we did in the entire history of mankind prior to 2000. So all the data collected from caveman to 2000 has been recreated in terms of volume in the, the last, last 24 two years. months. Exactly. Amazing. And that's only going to get worse. Yeah. How, what's the projection outward for that? Uh, it's, it's significant because as, as uh, the global economy grows, which we want, of course, we want to bring opportunity to more people around the world uh, and a growing middle class. Uh, the needs for information are going to increase. Mm -hmm. And if we try to meet those needs with current solutions, it's just not sustainable. So, um, so we looked at the, the architecture of the server. We fundamentally changed it. So we're using a chipset that's based on uh, the, the chips that are in our, our smartphones. Mm -hmm. So they're designed to run more energy efficient and cooler. Uh, and then the, uh, the Moonshot uh, server actually shares storage cooling uh, and networking uh, across the different uh, moonshots within a, a particular so it's a chassis. Networked, so it's like a network server. It's a network server right, okay. within cool. the within the chassis. So uh, and this space savings are just uh, also I think an important environmental. Yeah, I mean, you, have benefit. The, you have the energy savings, but even yep. if you're a big company, just the the real estate savings would probably be very Absolutely. interesting because you can shrink something down to a fraction of the size of one. Well, imagine life. fitting 1,800 servers in yeah. the space that you used to have for one rack. And when we talk about this data growth, um, how are you guys looking at distributing that? Are you working on um, other products and services that help to manage all that growth? Because it's got to be more than just a server, right? Absolutely. This is part of a, a network of solutions. Uh, so HP has security solutions uh, in, that help to protect data. Uh, we also have storage solutions that are uh, fail-safe and enable storage and backup. Uh, and it's all really part of the same overall ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing we're looking at are, are breakthrough ways, as I said, this is a, a networked cooling uh, system to cool that, that uh, rack even more efficiently. So the 89% energy savings that we're getting through Moonshot right now can be increased by leveraging that networked approach. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, so last question before we let you get back to the, the, the room. <laughs> um, what else is HP doing at large around climate? Like it's a big topic and it's more than just your hardware. Yes. Uh, I know that the company has a huge number of initiatives around this issue. What are the, what are the things you're working on and what are the goals? We've looked at uh, really our climate impact across the value chain and we're the first IT company to do our complete scope three carbon footprint. So we've, uh, we've had that uh, completed in, in May of this year. We had it assured by Ernst & Young, uh, which gives it a, additional credibility. We have a carbon accounting manual that's available online that shows how we created the carbon footprint. But what's more important than all of that is it revealed to us that you know, our products 
uh, are 60% of our footprint. Mm -hmm. Hence, you know, innovation like Moonshot is but critical. a lot of companies don't know that, like how much their product makes, it makes they up their total don't. Part of their footprint. They don't. And then the other big insight was that our supply chain is 36% of the footprint. And so just yesterday, uh, to your point, Stan, we've uh, created a goal for our supply chain to reduce the footprint uh, within our tier one suppliers by 20% by 2020. So that's along with our operations goal to reduce by 20% by 2020. So when you start looking across the, the, the whole value chain, products, supply chain, operations, we've got goals and actions against each one of those. Yeah, and I guess you can't create those goals and actions if you don't know where you're at, right? So Absolutely. it's kind of about identifying these hotspots. The classic, you, hot spots. you can't manage what you don't measure. It's, <laughs> right. it's about the hotspots. But it's, that would be given from a data-driven company like HP, right? Absolutely, we are engineers <laughs> to the yeah. core. Got another number. Absolutely, right. it's, it's, it's critical to get agreement and consensus around that and also get people motivated. So uh, you give us a target and we go after it, so okay. it's great. Well, we're waiting for the 100% energy neutral server, which is probably a ways away, but... Uh, you know, it's, not we'll as far as, it's not as far as you might think. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to the day. Thank you very much, Chris. I'm Thank Stan Stalmaker with Hub Culture. We're at Climate Week uh, with HP. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Cheers.